Welcome. Uh, one evening last week, well past 10 p.m., a well-known investigative reporter sent an email to the RCFP hotline. Were there lawyers who could talk to him, say, in 30 minutes? And in fact, 30 minutes later, he was having a conference call with three of us. It was at that moment that I realized that what RCFP is, is the mash unit of the media bar. A little bit reverent, skeptical of authority, we're ready to operate on the spot. And as our colleagues at the media companies and law firms know, we are willing to let very young lawyers scrub up. As Paul Steiger said today at our board meeting, uh, we are also always looking for new ways to create mischief. I can't believe that Inez and Tracy are able to book us in a classy joint like this. There is triage for sure and more cases than we can handle. But despite it all, we want to, would not want to be any place else doing anything other than what we do. But everyone knows this is serious work at serious times. And today, the choppers are coming in from all over all the time. Requests for representation in litigation, for pre-publication review, for anarchist support, to defend journalists from a different kind of rival for the public's trust. I was asked to speak just a few minutes about RCFP's impact uh, from the broad suite of services that we're now offering. You've seen our film and, and uh, Kitty summarized the work we're doing in so many different areas today. But before I get to impact, I think there's no doubt that in the future, people will look back at RCFP's most significant achievement as giving Nabiya Syed the opportunity for her first stump speech. <laughs> that was fabulous, Nabiya. <laughs> Bravo. But here are a couple of little facts about the impact we're having in the courts. Our recent victories in the Seventh Circuit on access to grand jury materials and in the DC Circuit on the adequacy of the FBI's search in a FOIA case regarding the imper impersonation of journalists has now been cited almost two dozen times already in courts across the country, including in the most secret court in the land, the FISA court. Another example, the federal court in Washington, D.C. has a special page on its website for previously sealed matters that have now been unsealed. A couple of weeks ago, one of our legal fellows was on the page and was scrolling down, looking at all the matters from 2017 and 2018 in front of magistrate judges that have now been unsealed. There were five of them, and they are all five cases brought by RCFP. We are also uh, trying to make a mark on the news stories you see through our expanding docket of cases, many of which we partner on with journalists from news organizations, large and small. In the past year, stories have been published about, first and foremost, our win right here in New York City against the Trump Organization, which revealed for the first time that the president paid almost $1.4 million to settle a class action lawsuit involving the construction of Trump Tower. When we were here a year ago, we reported on that case, it was pending. We've come back a year later, we've won it, and there's been some great journalism about it. There have also been, in the last year, our efforts in Charlottesville where we secured the release of the state police's operation plan for last summer's Unite the Right rally, um, and in Oklahoma, where after a three and a half year pursuit uh, into the troubling details about the state's lethal injection program, many new details have finally come to light through our victory last month in a summary judgment motion.
These are just a couple examples of how the work we are doing in the courts is leading, we hope, to more deeply reported, richer journalism uh, for audiences across the country. And we encourage you to come visit us in Washington to learn more about our work and um, uh, to give us the chance to represent you in court, which is the deepest honor we could have. In closing, I just wanted to note that uh, my daughter, who is now a senior in high school, has been wandering around the house recently, uh, tormented as generations of high schoolers before her have been tormented by those very slim, elusive poems of William Carlos Williams. <laughs> she has been stumped by the red wheelbarrow. She has been puzzled by plums. And she has said to her father, on what does so much depend? And this will not be the last time that I cannot answer an existential question <laughs> from one of my kids. But it did get me thinking about the question on what does so much depend. And for us at RCFP, we see journalists today doing their jobs in truly remarkable ways, brave and resourceful and unbowed. And it is upon them and upon all the others in this room, the honorees and the dinner chairs, the First Amendment lawyers, the news organizations, the charitable foundations, and the corporate supporters, it's all of you for us on which so much depends. You come out for us year after year in good times and bad to fill this joint and to amplify your support for press freedom. And all of this is just to say that we are very grateful for that. Thank you.